I want to welcome you all, my fellow students, administrators, and guests. As your student body president, it's my privilege today to address you on a topic that affects all of us, tuition. I want to start by acknowledging the rising cost to tuition and the challenges that many of us face, may face in paying for it. The truth in that tuition is, has been increasing steadily over the years, and it's not always clear to students where the money is going. So let me be transparent with you about where our tuition dollars are going. First and foremost, they are being used to cover the cost of providing quality education. One thing that I love and I hope we all love is that Utah State is esteemed for its research and achievements and a high caliber of student involvement. Tuition includes paying for faculty and staff salaries, maintaining facilities, and investing in new technologies and resources that enhance the learning experience. Additionally, our portion of tuition goes towards financial aid programs that help students who may not be able to afford the full cost of tuition. This is something that we should be proud of as a community as it allows for greater access to education and ensures that talented and deserving students are not held back by their financial circumstances. President Cockett and I are committed to advocating for greater transparency in tuition dollars being used and exploring new ways to, ed to make education more affordable and accessible. This may include working with the administration to identify new sources of funding, supporting legislative efforts to increase public investment in higher education, and in exploring new partnerships and initiatives that help can th that can help reduce the overall cost in education. So let's get to it. Truth and tuition for the years 2023 to 2024. So we may ask ourselves, how does this all work? Starting back in January, specifically January 18th, we have a student fee board that oversees all of the different student fees, such as our activity and building fees. As well, we have a statewide student fee board that likewise reviews and approves all of student fees. There were no increases or decreases approved by both student fee boards. This was made for a historically short meeting. The USU Student Tuition Board reviews and approves or rejects the proposal for tuition increases or decreases. Again, no changes were proposed, so another short meeting. <laughs> Following that, these proposals were taken to the USUSA Executive Council, where the items were passed unanimously on February 14th. We love that, Valentine's Day. Um, that brings us to, to today, March 1st, our truth intuition. We will then take this presentation to be approved by the USU Board of Trustees on March 3rd, which is Friday. And then finally, we will take this to the Utah Board of Higher Education on March 24th. So in October of 2022, Utah's Governor Cox urged universities to hold a moratorium on tuition, and USU is honoring that moratorium. This indicates that there is no net change in our tuition or our fees for this upcoming year. Student fees are different from Logan and statewide. There are several reasons why Logan students may pay more in fees. One factor is the size of the campus and the student population. Larger campuses often require, often require more resources, services, leading to higher fees. Additionally, Logan may offer unique programs such as the NCAA athletics. Student fees for this year are $459 and for Logan students and $258 for statewide students. This is with a $0 net change. It has neither increased nor decreased this, from this last year. So let's break down the fees for transparency and understanding. Where is my money going? In Logan, we have an activity, building, athletics, Aggie shuttle, technology, campus recreation, library, and music and theater fee. Each of these fees supports and allows programs to continue. If any student ask you, asks you where does my fee go, here it is. So just to note, the total of these fees is $458.42 and the student fees are listed on this slide. 
As well, looking at our statewide campuses, we have a strong and robust USU system that facilitates learning in every corner of the state. As you will see, our two statewide residential campuses, USU Blanding and USU Eastern, as well as our statewide campuses, all pay $257.72 in student fees. Again, there are no net increases nor decreases from last year. Because of the different needs from region to region, you will notice that each of the individual fees may differ from one to another. But in total, they are the same sum from last year. That brings us to our review of tuition. And this often has many questions, so I hope to clarify that. President Cockett works extremely hard, and I, I really am so grateful to her for all that she does. But President Cockett works so extremely hard to keep the cost of this great university affordable. The state funds education. So for context, technical education and technical colleges are funded about 80 to 90 percent by the state. And degree granting universities like ours is funded around 63 percent by the state. Additionally, there are higher education salary compensation raises, which are covered 75% from the state, and the other 25% comes from universities and most likely from the students and tuition. Typically, this impacts our tuition, and specifically last year, this mandated salary compensation was the reason for an increase in tuition costs for the year of 2022. Again, there are no changes in tuition, so the tuition on statewide campuses is $2,067 for a resident student, and for a non-resident student, the tuition cost is $5,955. So in total, here are the tuition and fees for a Logan resident student, a Logan non-resident student, and a statewide resident student, as well as a statewide non-resident student. Additionally, we have an Eastern Moab and Blanding student taking less than or equal amount of 65 credits. Their tuition and their fees, as well as the net tuition and student fees proposals um, approved for this year, which is zero dollars, which equals to be the same as last year. It makes for nice math in being able to just add zero. That's like the math that I like to do. So I'm, it's beneficial that we've been able to do that and work alongside with the Governor Cox and his moratorium on tuition. So I just want to emphasize that the cost of tuition is a very complex issue. It requires a multi multifaceted approach and I'm confident that working together as a university community, we will find creative solutions to make education more affordable and accessible for all. I'm extremely grateful, again, for President Cockett's guidance and leadership in ensuring that the student's best interest, best interest is the pinnacle of focus in regards to tuition. So I would now like to turn the time over to Brian Warnick, who is the Department Head for Technical Education, and will continue the conversation for tuition this year. Thank you. Thanks, Clara. For context, uh, the, Utah has eight technical colleges and three institutions that offer technical education programs. USU serves as the technical college, similar to Bridgerland or Davis Tech or Mountainlands, for southeastern Utah. Uh, we do have technical education programs that are one semester and two semester certificates, and they are supported, as Clara mentioned, heavily by the state. So the tuition rate is, is significantly lower. Over the past two years, under the direction of the U Utah Board of Higher Education and the Commissioner of Higher Education's office, we've been working to align all of the technical colleges and the technical programs at the three institutions that offer technical uh, education programs so that they're aligned. They're similar in uh, program names, similar in the courses that they take, moving those technical colleges to credit-based rather than hours-based, and also aligning the cost structure and how students pay for their technical education programs. We were working on this in September, uh, looking at making an alignment, and then in October, as Clara mentioned, the governor uh, asked for this uh, moratorium. So we worked hard to align the cost structure of technical education programs at USU while holding the overall cost of these programs uh, neutral. So there, there's no overall net increase 
to those programs. So I want to emphasize that. Uh, so again, this, this only impacts, what I'm about to, to share with you, only impacts our technical education certificate programs at USU Blanding, USU Moab, and USU Eastern. Uh, so we, we, again, we work to level those, those cost programs. This was the tuition table for technical education programs, is the tuition table for this current year, and you can see it's, it's quite complex. Each program, in addition to a tuition of $67.50, a student fee of $15, and uh, in addition to those two, they also had program fees. Part of this adjustment will remove the program fee, and you can see that each of those programs, as we list down there, those program fees vary. And uh, some of those are quite expensive. If you look at heavy equipment operator on there, it's $4,000 just for the program fee because we have to maintain equipment and fuel for those, those pieces of equipment and that sort of thing. Uh, another one is the commercial driver's license was also high. And we'll talk about those two programs specifically. So what we've had to do based on, in, in working with, uh, with Yushi and the commissioner's office, is rearrange those pots of money so that they're similar at all of these institutions. Notice that the coins on those scales, they're the same number, they're just in different locations. So we have a lot of program fees and a smaller tuition amount. We will have a couple of programs that we're requesting and, and we, we have initial approval from the State Board of Higher Ed uh, to uh, charge a differential tuition on commercial driver's license and our heavy equipment programs because they're expensive. There will be a few course fees for high, ex for high expense programs such as cosmetology and the tuition will raise, there, you'll see in just a minute, there will be a, an increase to tuition but those program fees all go away. In the end, there's no cost difference for students uh, and that we want to emphasize that. Everything will be held net revenue neutral. So here's, in summary, what happens. Tuition will be increased from $67.50 per credit to $95 per credit. I know those of you who are uh, pursuing four-year degrees are looking at those numbers and thinking that you wish your tuition was that level. Uh, it, it is a great deal for our students. The average across the technical colleges is $100, so we will be slightly below average on that. Uh, we will implement in a, in a few courses, not very many, uh, course fees. The student fees will decrease from $15 to $3. We've talked to our associate vice presidents in Price, Moab, and Blanding, and uh, we, we will still be able to provide access for students to things like counseling and psychological services, the library, uh, those types of things with that fee. And the big thing is eliminating those program fees. So again, uh, we will balance, all of this will be balanced, net revenue neutral. And uh, we will, as, as mentioned on that last bullet point, we will be pursuing uh, differential tuition for CDL and heavy equipment. Uh, so here's the overall uh, cost you can see per credit, uh, and it is per credit, there is no tuition plateau uh, for uh, technical education programs. There's also no difference between resident and non-resident tuition for technical education programs. They are all the same. Uh, and so you can see that $95 is what we're going to from $67.50, reducing that student fee. And so um, there is a, you know, an increase if you look just at the tuition, but it, once those program fees are eliminated, uh, that changes. Here's an example. This is commercial driver's license, so you can see how this works out. Uh, the tuition uh, will increase from $1,147.50 to $1,615 in the upcoming year. The student fee will decrease from $255 to $51. The program fee of $2,255 will be completely eliminated. Differential tuition will take about half of that uh, additional program fee, uh, so $1,000 or the eliminated program fee. And then we will have some course fees. Notice that differential tuition is only for the six credits of the basic behind the wheel training uh, for uh, the CDL. The additional courses for the additional endorsements will have some course fees. In the end, notice that bottom line, 
the overall cost for those students taking commercial driver's license is actually 50 cents lower than it was uh, for this current year. And that's, uh, that's my presentation. I'm going to turn it over to President Cockett to sum things up and to answer questions. Wow, now I know why I have other people do the presentation. Those were both incredible and incredibly clear. So I'm curious here, who knew that we did technical education at those three campuses? Oh, great, great. Not everybody does know that. The other one that might have caught your eye is that lower tuition uh, for people taking less than 65 credits at those same uh, campuses, Eastern, Moab, and Blanding. So you might think, well, why do they get uh, that lower? That's because USU is offering the community college uh, role in those three campuses, and community colleges uh, ha have that lower tuition because they are higher subsidized by the state. So if we could get more subsidy, for our degree programs, we would certainly love to do that because that would also keep uh, the, the cost of those programs uh, lower as well. But I think uh, President Alder really summed up a key point, and that is we are always looking at how we can keep the degrees, the certificates at USU affordable. And you've seen this, uh, like we work on the tuition, we work on the student fees, uh, we really have to justify uh, the need for raising those. Uh, we also do it, though, affordability in other ways. I think of the plateau tuition, the same price for 12 to 18 credits that uh, degree programs have. I think of that as a great mechanism for keeping things affordable. Um, and it's a, like a scholarship you don't even have to apply to. You just take between 12 and 18 credits and you pay the amount for 12. So we love doing that. That's definitely a loss of revenue for the university, but it is a way to uh, promote affordability and encourage students take more credits and finish uh, quicker. Another thing, of course, we're always working on is scholarships. Um, and we're, we're, uh, we're uh, offsetting tuition that we collect between 25 and 30% by scholarships. Um, we're always looking at new ways we can offer scholarships. Uh, this last year, we uh, offered something called the Aggie Promise, a four-year scholarship for those students that re uh, receive Pell funding. We have the uh, freshman transfer scholarships. We also have like many, many uh, scholarships through our college and, and departments. And we are focusing on adding more dollars to those scholarship funds. And I was caught by these banners that are up along here, these Aggie impacts uh, done by colleges. We actually have just uh, unrolled what we call Aggie Impact Campaign. And the focus of that is to raise more scholarship students, or more scholarship funds for you, the students. Um, so uh, again, we're really hoping to make this affordable. One of the things that we're working on, which won't benefit you guys, but will for the future, is uh, you might have remembered, for those of you that got those freshman scholarships, you got uh, an award letter, and it might have said four years of scholarships, two years of scholarship, one year of scholarship. And you might have said to yourself, well, what the heck am I supposed to do for the other years, those that you that had the one and the two? And we said, well, go over to your college and department. They have lots of scholarships. And hopefully they did, and hopefully they are supporting you. We are moving to somewhere where we will combine the university and those college and department scholarships right from the get-go. So incoming freshmen will now know that they can, they can count on that money coming for those subsequent years. Again, just one of the many ways we are looking at affordability. 
And I also, um, just for sake of putting too much on these slides, we have our graduate student senator here. Raise your hand. And she was newly reelected. Congratulations. <laughs> and um, just like for all of those undergraduates, uh, graduate tuition and student fees remain flat as well. So I wanted to do a, a shout out for that. Um, now, um, uh, I will tell you that we do have a bit of a complication this year, and that is, as Clara mentioned, President Alder, we've been using the tuition increase to pay for 25% of the salary increases that the state gives us uh, for, uh, for our staff and faculty. Um, normally they give us 75% and then we take 25% of new money from tuition, we combine it together and we give our people the, the salary increase. This year, we would like to say they're giving us 100%, but it, it appears they are not going to. So, uh, but we made the promise that we're not raising tuition, and so we're looking at different ways uh, to balance 